So today I want to talk about the PlayStation 5. I'm not going to make a giant chart and show the final specs because I feel like in about three months from now, we'll get a good idea of literally exactly what the specs are from a couple of leaks coming down. But Sony hasn't made all of their decisions yet. But what they have made clearly is their overall vision for the PlayStation 5. And they had visions for their previous consoles. The PS3, frankly, was a master of everything super system because they knew they didn't want to kill the PS2 early. What they wanted to do is have another console they could sell above the PS2 for a much bigger price to use their, frankly, brand power to capture a high-end market and sell Blu-ray players. That's what the PS3 was for. It's a little disjointed, though. But the PS4 was very coherent. Making the most efficient, barely high-end gaming PC you can for $400. An APU with a graphics card perfectly matched to about an i3 performance processor and enough RAM to last an entire generation. Eight gigabytes and what they would do is add extra pipelines between the ram to the processor add extra asynchronous compute cores and pipelines for those so that you could offload processing to the graphics card effectively making it so there are no possible bottlenecks not even possible if the cpu becomes bobbed down well we've really enhanced the gp gpu capabilities make the graphics card run at some of this stuff and vice versa that's what they did and they did it well but what do you do with the playstation 5 well, games are approaching 100 gigabytes, and GTA 5 was absolutely massive, along with Red Dead Redemption 2 for the amount of detail in it, and those games took a long time to load. Effectively, Red Dead Redemption 2 almost didn't have fast travel, because the fast travel took... I mean, it's very clear it took as much time to load you riding your horse there, almost, maybe half as much, as it did to just load a new area. And, in fact, the Infamous devs, you know, Sucker Punch, have talked about how the Infamous Second Son and the previous games were basically limited your fast, tra your um, kind of your flying speed to how fast they could load with a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And I know you think just adding an SSD will solve that, but in fact, I don't think it will. And here's what you really need to think about. There are 16 and 24 gigabyte graphics cards out now. I have one, a Radeon 7. And I have SSD RAID, which combined does about 1,100 megabytes per second. So 1.1 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. But if you think about it, isn't that basically the fastest you can load into the graphics card? A high bandwidth cache kind of cuts it down a little bit. But most games are still at 4 to 8 gigabytes and so I load my games in a few seconds. But if you had a 24 gigabyte system and 12 gigabytes of RAM, a 500 megabyte per second SSD, just your normal SATA SSD, is only going to load 10 gigabytes in 20 seconds, guys. That's a problem. That doesn't work out, especially when we get into 100 gigabyte games. That could be loading into 32 gigabyte buffers on PC. We need faster storage. And Mark Cerny sees this. And he's going to take it to the next level. That's my opinion. The leaks we have suggest Sony's going with, and I'm just going to call it this, the fastest MSATA on the market when it comes out. Or should we say by late quarter to 2020 is when they're just going to have to do the cutoff. We might get four or five gigabyte per second solid state drives and i believe they will use a coherent fabric soldering the chips of the ssd to a motherboard so sorry no upgradable solid state drives i don't think on the ps5 but they'll give you two terabytes at launch and they will use the fastest possible interface to go to the fastest gdr6 they can get on the market the rumors right now are the newest dev kits have already moved up to 1.8 gigabit per second and i know their target is 2.2 so that's really fast RAM with a really fast storage drive. And it will be big Navi, probably in between a 2080 and 2080 Ti in performance. That will probably keep high bandwidth cache. I think they're going to keep it. And I think they're going to use high bandwidth cache to possibly use this fast solid state drive as more vram if they need to it's going to be incredible i'll have a link in the description below to these professional um cards amd's been selling where they put 
high bandwidth cache and M SATA drives on a graphics card to give you kind of one terabyte of VRAM for your professional card, which makes 8K editing excellent. And I believe that's what they'll do with the PS5. I believe they're going to have a giant pool of ultra-fast RAM, ultra-fast storage, all integrated together with a powerful Zen 2 processor and big Navi graphics card that allows instant loading times, that allows you to load worlds in a way you literally couldn't before. I mean, GTA 6 is rumored to be the entire East Coast and part of the Midwest. If you can fly from Miami to New York, you need to be able to load everything below you in case you just jump out like an idiot. They need to account for that. So they need to be able to load that massive world as complex or more more complex than Red Dead Redemption, except now you're going at like half the speed of sound. That is a problem that is going to hit last gen. They can't put that on last gen. And if you, oh my God, if you don't have a solid state drive yet, good luck loading games in two years. And you're going to want to stay frosty here, PC gamers. If you get the fastest SSD you can, I'm just going to say it. At this point, hard drives are kind of pointless. Get SATA hard drives that are, you know, 550 megabytes per second for storage, but not for your favorite games. You're going to want M SATA or PCIe solid state drives moving forward. You're going to probably want that, that PCI 4.0 motherboards coming out from AMD so you can get 5 gigabyte per second or faster of storage so you're not bogged down in GTA 6 because this is Sony's vision and it probably will be the gold standard of how we make games in about four years. So stuff to think about and I am very excited to see what games we can make when we can load 10 to 100 times faster, when we can load things in front of us at infinite view distances or complex shapes that we couldn't before instantly. It's going to be, I think, another finally a console generation, unlike this last one. This last one just did everything well at the same time, as I've said before. But the next one's going to enable us to make games we just couldn't make before, and that is a turbocharged, ultra-fast RAM, ultra-fast storage system. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm excited. I don't know if you are. Please like the video if you did. Share this video. That does so much for me. And if you want to support me, go to my Patreon, please. And if you're a Patreon member, you'll get access to my Discord and a podcast coming out that you'll be able to discuss these things with me really in depth. Thank you. <laughs>